All right, let's do this. A uh, regular array with a relative offset in GeoNodes. So relative is the easiest one to explain, and it also happens to be the first item on the menu here if you go with the regular array modifier. So relative uh, means that every instance of the original object is offset from it by one bounding box unit, by the object size, basically. Okay, so we can increase the count here, and if we look at the at the array from orthographic view, if we increase the factor to something like two on the x axis, for example, you can see that you can fit exactly one more cube in between these two instances. And that's how relative offset works. It just takes the bounding box and uh, offsets every instance by it. Pretty straightforward stuff. And um, let's go ahead and create the same setup in geometry nodes. Let's give us some room. And uh, the way I like to approach it is by using the points node. These are our points. And uh, first thing we need to do is to expose the count. Let's actually increase the radius to better see what we're doing here. And as you can see, even if we increase the count, it doesn't really affect anything because they are all situated in one position, which is basically the object origin. But just quickly to demonstrate that there are indeed four points. There you go. We plugged in a random value in the position, and you can see that there are four points in there. Perfect. Okay, so the reason I mentioned the bounding box when I was talking about the regular array is because it's a really useful tool to calculate the size of your object. So let's actually connect a bounding box a node to the tree. And, uh, well, it's not very interesting to look at in this case because uh, a cube is basically its own bounding box. So let's quickly go ahead and replace it with a monkey, for example. Okay, so if we Alt Shift left click on the geometry, you can see that we have Suzanne over here and the bounding box is its size, basically. Okay, and we have two vector outputs here that we can subtract from one another to get the size of the object. Let's actually rename this node to object size. Okay, perfect. The second thing we need to bring in is the factor from the regular array, this thing over here, the factor that you, uh, that you specify here. To do that, we just need another multiply in vector math, and let's actually expose this value over here. I'll bring in one more geometry group input here. That's just the way I like to organize my geo nodes. You know, I like to have separate group inputs for every exposed value. That's just the way I prefer. Okay, so let's set it to 100, zero, zero, just as, as it is by default in the regular array. And uh, if we go ahead and plug this value directly into the position of the points, you can see that it kind of works because it it has offset the all four points in this case by a single number, which is the object size multiplied by like one zero zero, which gives us this two point seven whatever, which is the size of Suzanne on the x axis. That's fine, but we need to offset every single point by this value. And to do this, we go ahead and multiply this thing. We can actually use scale because it's you know a little more clean, but we, we could leave it and multiply, it doesn't really matter. By the index, which takes the index of the points, um, because uh, these small input uh, nodes, they look at the geometry that they will be eventually connected to. So the points, you know, if you read it backwards, um, the index is taken from the points themselves. That's how um, that's how fields work. 
I will link a great video by the node master himself, Arendale, where he explains how fields work in detail. But yeah, this is just a, just a quick recap. And uh, the last step is to actually instance our geometry on those points. Let's connect it like this. There you go. That's our pretty simple setup for a regular array. Okay, so how do we actually turn this into something that goes outwards from the center? Well, it's actually pretty easy. I think at this point it's like four nodes. Let's start with a set position for the points themselves because we need access to this guy over here, the offset. So we're gonna offset all the points by some number in the negative x direction in this case. Okay, so we have our object size which is being multiplied by the factor and let's actually branch out from here with another scale vector math. Let's connect it to the offset directly just to see what we are doing and uh, well this is kind of an expected behavior so we have the object size multiplied by the factor it's been scaled by one which basically does nothing at this point and it is being connected to the offset so the first point uh, is being moved over to the right by one bounding box so we can fit one monkey over here okay makes sense how do we move it in the negative direction well we obviously need to connect some negative number in the scale here and the number we're looking for is actually our count so we go ahead and connect the count into the scale you can see that it goes all the way here in the positive direction that's of course expected because we haven't uh, multiplied it by a negative number so let's add a math node set it to well let's set to this to divide because we need to move it you know half the distance we, we want half of the points to be in the negative direction and half of the points be in the positive direction so let's divide it by minus two and here we have a problem which is better visualized if we decrease the count to something like two okay so let's do the mental math here let's see what's happening so the count is set to 2, it's being divided by minus 2, so it becomes minus 1, and it is being offset by, well, minus 1 bounding box in the x direction. So the first point is actually over here, it's not here, it's, uh, it's in the center. And you can see that you can fit exactly one monkey in here, so it's one bounding box. The first point and all the other points are being offset in the negative direction by minus one bounding box. So to remedy this, we just need to subtract one from the count. Oops, sorry, I got the wrong socket here. Subtract minus one from the count. And there you go. That's our array going from the center. We can increase the count and it works we can increase the factor and you can see that you can fit one monkey inside we can use other axes here let's you know set them all to one you know you can see that it all works either way you slice it perfect okay let's actually set it back to one zero zero so the reason you might want to use the geometry nodes based approach as opposed to the regular array modifier is because you have access to all the fun stuff from geometry nodes you know like the random rotation for example that you can expose the values of and have control over them in the modifier itself you know the the cool stuff it's uh, geometry nodes you know what i'm talking about here's a quick demo of what else you can do with this technique this is just an asset that i created in advance and you can find it on my Gumroad page. I will leave the link in the description. It's totally free. The node setup itself is a little more complicated than what we created today, but it really follows the same logic. 
So feel free to deconstruct this for yourself. There's just some additional functions thrown on top, namely the color randomizer, for example. This is just the material setup with uh, an attribute created in geometry nodes driving the color ramp. The way it works is you just realize your instances, and there you go, that's your island seed. And you can, of course, stack the arrays on top of each other, like this. For example, one of them goes in the x direction, the other goes in the y direction. You get the idea. Anyway, I hope you guys find a good use for this technique in your projects, and uh, yeah, talk to you soon.